G'day, Ben from Melbourne here. Uh, this is just a little bit of a uh, public announcement in regards to my best new records for 2023. Because uh, I did I actually did a much longer video which had another five albums I thought were worth your while. Um, and I cut them out because of it was like a 40 minute video which was ridiculous it was already getting too long but i thought i would um have a, a shorter video featuring those five because i kind of like think they're worth um talking about as well and there's a change of pace too because there was a lot of you know more guitar oriented stuff in the previous video so hope you enjoy the uh, next five and um, the background and the shirt will be much nicer in just a tick. I don't go to clubs I'd rather stay at home Jack Ladder and the Dreamlanders album Tall Pop Syndrome. Uh, this one is on Endless Records, I believe is the label. Um, yeah, like the title says, this is a pop record, but a electro indie pop kind of like a less dreary Depeche mode, uh, if you will. I do love the mode, don't get me wrong. Um, and also like the mode, Jack has that great baritone voice um great lyrics too like i love uh i think it's the opening track home alone yeah it is um yeah with the line i don't go to clubs i'd rather stay at home where the drinks are cheap no one's stepping on my toes and i dance alone mm. it probably sounds like a lot of us lonely old fellas well a lot of us have partners too but it's a lonely endeavor this record thing at times <laughs> Um, yeah, if you like your indie pop tunes with a lot of, um, yeah, keys and, um, more electronic sound, you'll love this. Um, just great catchy songs, good songwriter. Um, yeah, Jack Ladder actually started off, I remember seeing him years ago and he was kind of like modelling himself on like a, you know, acoustic -y folk troubadour kind of thing, but his last few records, the electronic elements keep coming in you know more and more and i think for the good he's released some great records righto now for some freak out time music with star time and their album like an exploding owl that's right that's what it's called and this is on means of production is that the record label yes it is anyway Starts off quite chaotic and then gets more chaotic as it explores the outer regions where jazz, punk and funk intersect. Mm -hmm. This is definitely some exploratory stuff. Um, probably sit nicely next to uh, some of the collaborations that John Dwyer has been doing recently. He of the OCs. Um, yeah, they mine that similar territory into the inner sphere if you will. I'm starting to sound like MGK Boston. He does a lot of if you wills, I think. Anyway, that's a tribute, of course. The second side opens with something that could possibly be like the contortions if they had have really extended out the jams. I think there's like one, yeah, five songs on this um, and they're all pretty long, but they're never boring, like they're grooving and 
gradually changing the whole time. Um, yeah, surprisingly, this has one poor kidney on sax. Um, don't worry, there's not too much wild sax in there. It's not too scronky for anybody to scare that. But I say surprisingly it has poor kidney on it because last year I saw the poor kidney experience support mud honey and they were unbelievably shit. I'll just leave it at that. All right. Here we go. Let's have a look at the inside. I think. Oh, another one of those rare black colored vinyls. Vinyls? People hate it when you say that. <laughs> Okay, now on the great Cheer Squad label, which has been reissuing a lot of great stuff, like um, uh, the Underground Lovers have reissued some things. Um, there's been a great Stems comp on there, but this is a new band called the Rhine Hearts with their album Full Bloom. And yeah, this is like a throwback to the great power pop sounds on this bad boy. Um, yeah, rich with melody and sing-along choruses. I hear like 80s Citadel, you know, label, the Australian label, more on their pop end of stuff, you know, bands like the Dubrovniks and of course the aforementioned Stems. Um, yeah, even going back to like the chiming big star sounds, uh, yeah, just really catchy, great record. You know, fair chunk of that great teenage fan club harmony action going on here, um, yeah. Nothing original, but it's undeniably a catchy record, which is just a fun one to put on and just groove about, sing along, and do whatever else it is you like to do. Whoa, two black ones in a row. I might have the largest collection of black vinyl in the VC these days. great lower plenty they're back i think it was like seven years maybe since their last one with um new one called no poets and this goggle time is on ah oh, the great bedroom suck records really good stuff actually thigh master used to be on that um yeah the only thing that <laughs> really ties this record together is um there's the acoustic guitar and i'm not talking about sitting around the campfire singing kumbaya in your cardigan and talking about your feelings i'm i'm talking about indie acoustic guitar stylings indie rock that is um yeah there's like three different vocals going on and there's someone in there i which I don't remember that voice on older Lower Plenties, which sounds like a strange mix between Dave Berman of the Silver Jews slash um, pur Purple Hearts. No, Purple Hearts is the Australian band. Purple something. 
Anyway, he sounds a bit like Dave Berman and Tex Perkins all rolled into one, like the crooning Tex. Um, and yeah, like, indie is how making no apologies for it. Lower Plenty have always been like that. You know, they're uh, pretty much a perfect representation of the last 10 years of Melbourne indie rock. Um, yeah, ramshackle, loose, you know, and brushing up against brilliance more often than these guys should be allowed. This is a really good return. So pretty plain back there. What have we got on the inside? Holy cow. Wow. I'm going to have to eat my words about the lack of black vinyl. Last one, Jen Cloa's new album, um, yeah, I Am The River, The River Is Me on Milk Records, which is a record her and of course Courtney Barnett founded that label. Um, apparently Jen Cloa has recently discovered her Maori roots, um, I'm not sure the whole story how far back it goes, but um, yeah, this also has the alternative title in Maori, which I'm not going to attempt to pronounce as I don't feel like offending people. But this, you know, I, I hate to compare, but if you do like Courtney Barnett, you will really like Jen Cloa's uh, stuff. Like, they're in a similar ballpark. Um, this is probably a slightly more reflective record um, than her previous one, which was a bit more driving indie rock um but yeah beautiful stuff really good record she's on a great run at the moment um incidentally the other night when right watching rage which is like a music television thing which plays clips of bands all through the night i happened to turn it on and there was a film clip off this and i couldn't tell you what so song because the um Film clip was quite bizarre. It was a whole heap of people in a hot tub who were all dressed in drag and it was quite racy, shall we say. By the way, beautiful vinyl. Yeah.